Let me play one more clip. This is still extant. There was a story in the New York Times last night by um, Peter Baker. And was it Maggie Haberman, too? I'm not sure who it was. Um, Peter Baker. Let me pull this thing out here. Shoot. Um, And it's unclear at this point. The, the, The story was reporting that President Trump was planning to sign an executive order on Wednesday, that's today, targeting what he sees as anti-Semitism on college campuses, right? Um, The order will effectively interpret Judaism as a race or nationality, not just a religion. Now, the order was released today. Well, here is uh, Blumenthal on uh, CNN responding to this. This is a senator from Connecticut. Today, the president's going to sign an executive order, which effectively uh, makes Judaism a nationality in regards to students at college in, in protected college speech. What he's trying to do is crack down on anti-Semitism, some anti-Semitism uh, on college campuses. In, in doing that, the 1964 civil rights law, you basically have to say that Judaism is a nationality. There are some people who, who don't doubt the motivations here, But that's a precarious label in this case. The Soviet Union. Pause it for one second. I'm going to let him get on with that, why this is. But there are some people who don't doubt the intent. Excuse me? What? I got got news for you. There's a lot more who doubt his intent. There's some people who think the earth is flat. There's a lot more who think it's not flat. But continue. Don't doubt the motivations here, but that's a precarious label in this case. The Soviet Union did that, for instance, uh, called Judaism a nation. It's a religion. What's the risk reward there? Is this something you support? I am very, very wary as a Jew of labeling Judaism as a nationality. It smacks not only of what happened in the Soviet Union, but also Nazi Germany that my own father escaped in 1935. I'm an American. I am an American. My religion is Judaism, and my allegiance is to the United States of America. And I think there are other tools to fight discrimination. I've used them as a prosecutor and as a public official. There is no reason that we need to label Judaism as a nationality. I'm very wary of it. Okay, and um, uh, people are right to be nervous about that. It brings up the question of like dual loyalty and the intent is to criminalize things like uh, BDS, which they tried to do by statute. You'll recall BDS is the uh, boycott, divest, um, uh, what is it? Sanction. Sanction uh, movement wherein uh, people are trying to boycott, divest, and sanction uh, Israel for its occupation of, uh, of Palestine and, broadly speaking, what many Israeli leaders have described as an apartheid state. If not a fully formed one, certainly a developing one. Um, people can have uh, disagreements on whether, you know, what the intent of some core people associated with BDS is. I personally, uh, but for some of the academic uh, provisions, um, tend to think it's a pretty good idea that, you know, is moving public opinion. I think the proof that it's moving some public opinion is the constant pushback and money spent to attack BDS and demonize it. Um, certainly in that context, the rights of Palestinians are, um, underrepresented and, uh, underdefended in this country around the world for the most part. Uh, but we had a situation where the secretary of education, Betsy DeVos, and she's got a guy working for him, Marcus, I think it's Ken Marcus, who has been. I think he is the Assistant Secretary of Education for Civil uh, Liberties in the Department of Education. 
and they have been working on uh, on stuff like this. Duke had some of its federal funding, at the very least, uh, threatened because supposedly they had a program that was to uh, build cultural uh, awareness and language awareness, and they were being disrespectful of Israel or something to that effect. I think that's in still in court right now. Donald Trump the other day stood in front of a bunch of Jews and basically said, like, um, uh, every anti-Semitic trope you could drop in the world in front of these guys. Do you hate me, but you love me? Um, and to a certain extent, I think the timing of this has to do with trying to take some pressure off of his statements, which were highly anti-Semitic. The executive order was released today. From what I've read from lawyers from the Department of Justice, this executive order does not change existing law whatsoever. However, from a political perspective, what it does is it continues to chill the um, speech on campus. It continues to chill. And by speech on campus, I mean like literally like course selection and federal funding. It is, um, it is basically a way, one more way to attack any expression of rights for Palestinians is really what this is ultimately about. Not changing the law to say that criticism of Israel is inherently in prima facie anti-Semitic. It is creating this aura that criticism of Israel is on its face anti-Semitic. And this is not true. Some of the most vocal critics of Israel are Jews, Jews who uh, practice Judaism, Jews who do not practice Judaism, Jews who practice various forms of Judaism. But Jews, broadly speaking, are uh, also critical of Israel. Non-self-hating Jews, critical of Israel. I happen to be one of those. And under at least the regime and the spirit of what they're trying to do, if not the letter of the law of what they're trying to do, is to create this sense that criticism of Israel is inherently anti-Semitic. And this is a sop to the Christian Zionists who support Donald Trump and the right-wing Jews who support Donald Trump. This is basically just pay for play. Uh, so the reporting was out ahead of it, but we don't know if the language was changed after the reporting got out there and there was just everybody caught, the hairs caught on fire. Another case of Trump derangement syndrome. But even if the language was changed or this is part of the agenda to create this aura of where we're going. Really bad stuff. All right, folks. Um, we're out of time.